Hello, today we will be looking at this Bluetooth speaker and checking out if it's possible to hack it and make it a basically a Bluetooth receiver. Uh, I have also another Bluetooth speaker that's much much heavier and uh, what it seems that it has a much better battery life and that the speaker is a greater quality. And basically this one also has a USB port uh, and it's possible to play uh, your audio files directly from the pen drive. So that, that would be really great. And, and this one uh, have uh, AUX in so it can play uh, music directly from, from your phone via cable and also have a FM radio. I checked and this one is basically two times, over two times heavier than, than the uh, white one. And uh, that would be also explain it's, uh, that, that this one uh, was about uh, five dollars and this one only about two. So yeah, that's basically a build quality. Okay. Uh, uh, what, what, what it's also doing, it's blinking a, uh, a multicolor color LED light once it's on. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Okay, right. Uh, and and it's, it's not really that impressive. If I switch off the light, you can see that yeah, it's basically a, a Chinese candle with a speaker. Okay, so. Let's start with disassembly. Okay, so what I have done here is to remove uh, is that I removed those two screws and it basically fell apart. Uh, we have some 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 electronic boards here. Uh, the uh, the speaker uh, it's it's really good quality. Uh, the the multicolor LED and here is the battery. Uh, it's a really small one, I suppose it's about 80, maybe 100 milliampere, uh, milliampere hours and uh, I don't think it will, uh, he will get any battery life from this, maybe an hour or two. Okay, so uh, here we have a joke to change uh, the songs, uh, uh, the mini USB port, Bluetooth antenna, USB port uh, for the pen drive and, and, and so on, uh, micro SD port and the switch. And the Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Right, it goes directly to the uh, to the uh, Bluetooth port. Let me just zoom in a bit uh, on the board. Uh, what from what I have gathered, uh, that's the main controller, quartz, and the uh, sound amplifier, but it's a mono sound amplifier. So it's connected directly to the speaker and it's really loud, but it's still a mono signal. So signal. So, so we need to trace back all, all of this back to the uh, main chip and uh, check if we can get a stereo signal uh, for our purpose here. And Hold on a moment, I will desolder some of this stuff and we'll be back in a minute. Main integrated circuit is a Beacon 3254. Uh, I wasn't able to find uh, any data sheet on it and it seems to be sold in a completely different packaging than on, the, uh, on this board. Uh, but it's basically a circuit that integrates the Bluetooth 4.1 at least it say that it's compatible with it uh, it supports multiple Bluetooth profiles uh, as well as a USB 2.0 uh, SD card and a FM receiver uh, it also has a AUX in but I wasn't able to pinpoint uh, where it's uh, at second one is an amplifier chip it's based on the LM4871 uh, mono amplifier chip it doesn't really say that on the packaging but I was able to uh, pinpoint its purpose uh, based on the, the pinout 
Uh, it's a three watt amplifier. Uh, it has uh, only one input and one output. So uh, the other pins are used for the shutdown or bypass. So I assume the bypass is like putting it, uh, putting the uh, audio data through without any amplifying and shutdown basically disables the chip. So it's like a mute pin. In plus and in minus uh, are the inputs, so I presume that in minus would be somehow connected to the, to the ground, but it was actually the signal pin, and the in plus was the uh, was the ground pin. Uh, the in minus was connected through resistor and a capacitor to the right channel. Okay, here we go. So the battery, uh, I kept it, but I removed the. Uh, the amplifier so that's gone so it won't uh, take any current uh, also the multicolor LED that's also gone uh, okay the battery is it's still connected the same way but let me zoom on the uh, the actual uh, part that I modified okay a bit more perfect I hope it's uh, it's uh, in focus now. Okay, so what what what's the actual uh, audio uh, connections? Uh, here was the uh, amplifier chip, and here are the two outputs. Uh, mm, these two were the inputs, so I traced them back, and uh, what I came up with was the one was leading through a capacitor to the uh, to the general uh, ground of the circuit, and the other one uh, it was uh, this one was leading through a uh, let me show you a resistor uh, two two hundred and twenty two ohms, and uh, uh, the capacitor like this one I also removed it. Uh, to the right channel, and uh, what, what what I noticed that uh, the left channel, this one, is it wasn't connected at all. So I, I did basically connect the, my earpiece to the ground, and uh, went through all of this to get the right channel. And after that, I was looking around for the left channel, and obviously it was uh, this one. Uh, so so the connection is done, right? So it's a normal jack uh, in, and 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 that's how you can connect your headphones. Uh, what can you also do is connect a microphone, so you can get uh, a, when when someone calls you and you pick up it, uh, you can talk with them, right? Using this uh, as a Bluetooth headset. Let me turn it on. So that's the only switch, and we have a nice little LED. I guess you are able to hear it because I put the headphones right next to the microphone of the camera. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. Yeah, it's now connected to my uh, to my laptop, so we will be able to test if the stereo sound works. Let me just go to the uh, test menu and okay. I think something went wrong here. Uh, it's possible that the that, that circuit is discharged, so let me just connect the. Uh... The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Yeah, I guess I. During the testing, I may have discharged it. So if I connect the power supply, the we have a is connected successfully. yeah, we have a red LED, so it's charging. Let me just try to connect it again. Bluetooth device is connected successfully. All right, so we can test it. Uh, let me see. All right. Go to the test menu and play the sound. Okay, perfect. So uh, the Bluetooth part works. Let me turn it off. 
uh, insert a memory card. It's a small one, but I just want to show you that it works. Music play motor. Yeah. Okay, and what can we also do is insert a pen drive. So I will do that in a moment. Okay, let's test it. Music play motor. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Yep. Yep. Alright. Seems to be working. Let me put down the headphones and okay. And how about okay, pause it maybe? Nope. Next, previous. Nope, that doesn't seem to work. Okay. But the built-in battery is able to support the play from the pen drive. So that's okay, and it seems to work pretty fine. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Here is the shot from the other side. In case it wasn't in focus before, it should be right now. And as you can see, the uh, right has the red, and the left has the bluish green or blue uh, wire and, and that's basically it. I wasn't able to trace it back uh, into the chip itself but hopefully uh, well it, it, sh it should work. It's a lot, it's a lot louder than the signal that was connected directly before the amplifier so it's basically an improvement now and it's almost too loud to hear to to listen to it on on the headphones. Yeah, so so it would be a good uh, source for the any amplifier that, that you can have. And uh, maybe in the future we will make an FM transmitter so you can listen uh, to your Bluetooth device on your car radio, old car radio maybe without the Bluetooth. Uh, or maybe we will be modifying a car radio to support Bluetooth using this chip. Unfortunately, uh, this chip has a lot of noise. It should be either filtered or uh, some uh, removed in some other way. But I guess that's the cheapo chip uh, for you. That, that uh, it's basically everything in one integrated circuit. Okay, thank you for watching. Goodbye.